Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, you may not know that I make quite a lot of videos for new riders. They're all designed to help you go from no bike to being on a bike, and it covers everything from licenses to how to ride, and also gear and things like that. Now people seem to like these quite short top five tips sort of things videos, so I thought I'd do a few of them. Uh, if you do enjoy this, please do hit that like button, I would appreciate it. But obviously today's video is top five buying tips when you're gonna buy gear, either for the first time, or in general, but I'm going to generally aim this at the person who's going to buy gear for the first time. Okay, so my number one tip, and this is a really, really important one, and it's why it's at number one, is use gear. If you're getting a bike, use gear. Helmet, jacket, gloves, Kevlar trousers or leathers and boots. Get the full kit. Even if you're on a 125, trust me, I'm talking from experience, it doesn't matter what you're on, if you come off at 40, you're coming off at 40. And if you're going into the side of a car, you're going into the side of a car. And this stuff will do so much to help protect you. Unfortunately, when I get onto one part of it, I have learnt the lesson the bad way and I have a very damaged knee. I know that doesn't seem like a tip, but seriously, a lot of people will buy half the gear and then just sort of give up halfway through, it would seem. And moving on from that to tip number two is don't overspend on one product and then leave yourself short somewhere else. When you budget to buy your gear, budget to get everything. Don't, like, you know, spend £600 on a super nice helmet and then realise, oh, I haven't got enough money for gloves or, or something like that. You have to think ahead and work out the entire outfit. And I know there's a few places that people will skimp. Um, this was mentioning. Very often people will just use normal jeans. I can talk from personal experience and a very battered knee that will never be the same. Normal jeans do nothing in a crash. The absolute bare minimum you want to have is something like a pair of Kevlar jeans. Personally, I like rock jeans, and I must point out here that I'm actually affiliated with this company because I have a discount code for them. However, my choice to use these has nothing to do with the fact that I earn money from them. I would still use them if I didn't. I've recently done a video talking about why I've worn these daily, and I mean worn them daily, for years upon years. However, you don't even need to spend this much for a pair of Kevlar jeans. The, um, the same website that sells the Rock jeans has MRT jeans, which are basically, to my understanding, the Rock Gen 1s. These are like the Gen 3s, although they seem to be more like the Gen 3.5s. You'll see in that video. But yeah, they're, they're still very good jeans, and they're like much, much cheaper. And as a bare minimum, I would say seriously, don't use normal jeans. Get a pair of Kevlar jeans. As I say, that's a bare minimum, but you can always go and get some, you know, some proper leathers, or you could even get textiles, but we'll get into that in a minute. Tip number three is some gear you really should try on before you buy it. Uh, you know, ordering a jacket, you can generally order one in your size, and you know, it might be a different cut or something, but it it's less risk. Ordering a set of gloves is a bit of a risky one because some companies have longer fingers and things like that. If you can return them, it's fine, whatever. Um, but one thing that's really important to make sure you get the fitment absolutely perfect on is a helmet. Um, oh, I must also point out that I was given this helmet by Icon years ago. Just doing all the legal stuff. Use whatever helmet you want. <laughs> but when it comes to helmets, it's more than just size. It's also shape and fitment for your head. Uh, I know some people have used this helmet and found that it's too, uh, it's, is it, it's too elongated, that's right, it's too elongated for their round head so it causes pressure points, whereas in, for me it's perfect and I've had the obverse where other helmets feel like they're squishing my forehead whereas this feels perfect to me. Part of this is comfort obviously but the most important part is that for a motorcycle helmet to work properly it needs to fit your head properly. If your head is loose, to my understanding, what happens is when your helmet hits the floor, it hits the floor, then your hit head hits the inside of the helmet. So you have this secondary impact, rather than one where it takes the, the helmet actually does its job of taking the, some of the force out of that impact. So it's really important that it fits you right. Of course, there are companies that you can mail order from, and they might even do free returns, so you can try it and return it. I don't know how that works with COVID at the moment, and I'm not quite sure how this works with COVID at the moment in just in stores about trying things on but yeah whatever i'm talking in general covid will be gone eventually now the reason i particularly say with helmets you need to buy them in person is i think if you buy them online if it doesn't fit quite right because of the faff of having to return it and get another one and all of that people are more likely to maybe accept something that's not quite right if you know what i mean because it's just like oh i'll just i'll just stick with this one it's all right it'll do and you'll hope it will be okay and it won't and that mean you have to replace it, or it won't do its job, or it just won't be good. So, but as I say, with a lot of things, you can risk buying online. Buying in shops is much better because you get to try the fitment. But with helmets, I really do think you should try them in person. Unless you have the time to try it, see if it's okay, 
and be fine to return it two or three times until you've got the one that fits you right. So tip number four is motorcycle boots. Um, there is one thing I will say is this, which is the enemy of the motorcycle boots longevity is the zip. I have had so many different pairs of boots over the years of different values. I've spoken to, I've done whole videos on this whole, whole subject. I really did rant about it because it annoys me a lot. The boots I've had time and time again, like these, uh, although these have actually, these Frank Thomas ones have actually done really well compared to the Oxfords, the, the RSTs, the other ones, I can't, BKS, I've had all these boots and they've all had the exact same issue, which is the zip brakes. Now I have no doubt that the thing that's going to kill these boots is going to be the zips. Because it's just what kills everything on bike gear and especially on boots. If you can get a set of boots that don't have zips, they have clasps, that's great. Um, or, I mean, I'd say it doesn't always follow if you spend a lot of money that you get better zips, but you do in some cases. I know a lot of people will say my cities have lasted forever because yes, they're also very expensive. Some people will say their Alpine Stars lasted forever and some people will say they lasted 10 minutes. It's a bit of a minefield, but just know and be prepared. Zips are the enemy. I did once ask a local company, because the boots I had were absolutely fine, it was just the zips I needed replacing, how much would you charge me to replace those zips? They said 50 quid, and I was like, hmm. And then they said per boot, and I was like, no. Because the boots were worth 120 quid, and it was not worth paying £100 to have them put two zips in. It just seemed ludicrous. Maybe he didn't want to do the work, I don't know. Uh, but if you've ever had any zips replaced in anything, let us know what you paid, because I'm interested to know myself. Also to this, use boots. And use boots. Don't use trainers, don't use lace-on shoes. You don't want laces on your shoes, because the risk is the lace comes undone, it gets caught into your chain, your foot gets yanked around underneath the bike, and then you, you ride over your own leg. And, well, legs don't like being ridden over, generally. And of course, also, if you have low-cut shoes, there's no ankle protection for when you come off the bike. Uh, and very often, people's ankles on bikes hit the ground in normal shoes and turn over, and nastiness ensues. The boots, like these, uh, one, they will help reduce the amount of movement. Some boots have a lot more protection than them. These are quite a, you know, a basic, cheap boot, really. But there is enough stiffness there that when it's on my leg, it's going to help protect it. And to say this in the nicest way, it also keeps things together a bit more if anything does go wrong. And my last tip, number five, is to do with, if you live in the UK, know that you're gonna need basically two sets of gear for summer and for winter. Unless you're a little bit unhinged like me, in which case you use the same gear. I'll explain what I use, but of course I'll also mention some of the options uh, as well. As I mentioned before, I use the Rock Jeans all year round. Um, I do also have leather trousers, but when I use these with my leather jacket and it all zips together, so it's like a two-piece, I use these when I'm riding a bit more vigorously or in the summer, things like that, because these actually don't keep much warmth in at all. I do sometimes use them in the winter and I regret it every time. This is all vented, legs get freezing cold. You can wear like silk under under layers that can help keep it a bit warmer. And then if, if they're not too ventilated, it actually can be all right. Depends on the exact leathers you get, but these are summer ones. Uh, but generally, in my experience, leathers are good for the summer when it's dry. And because uh, that's the other thing, if leathers get wet, they take three days to dry out. Whereas in the winter, I'd rather use these Kevlar jeans that actually for me feel warmer, probably because of the amount of Kevlar is there, but also because I can use thicker underlayers under these if I want to, to get a bit warmer. Of course, what is probably the best, and I would like to get a, a full textile set, set up, is textile. Uh, windproof, waterproof, you know, much more thermally protected, depending on what you buy. Uh, it seems like a full textile suit is the thing that you want for the British winter when it's just cold and wet and damp and nasty. Uh, I don't know much about textiles, as I say, because I've never really used them. I've always used Kevlar jeans, leather jackets, uh, and then leather trousers with my same leather jacket. Uh, it's just been the way that I've liked using my gear, but I am very interested in getting some textile gear, and I may be trying to do that with some companies to, to you know, do a test over this winter or some stuff. We'll see. As with all the tips in this video, if anyone's got anything or anything else to add to the comments, go ahead and do it. As I say, I don't know a lot about textiles. I'm sure some of you could could go on for ages about the pros and cons of certain textiles and certain things you should look out for. I, I, I only can talk on the things that I use. And of course, sorry I didn't show this till now, leather jacket, although I've done a whole video on my Frank Thomas setup recently, I uh, did a review because I've had this going for like five, nearly six years now. Obviously in the winter, uh, my jacket, I stick in the liner, which makes it a bit warmer.
So the only difference between my winter and my summer gear is that the jacket gets the liner, I get a neck scarf, and I sometimes will put on a very thin thermal layer underneath my jeans. Uh, but other than that, it's the same gear all year round. I find that I can deal with being cold and I can deal with being hot. It's just part of the experience of riding bikes. But of course that doesn't change the fact that when you're freezing cold you wish you were boiling hot, when you're boiling hot you wish you were freezing cold. And of course gloves come in seasons as well, you know, you can choose the design that you like, but know that summer gloves have lots of ventilation in them, winter gloves don't, uh, waterproof, windproof gloves are kind of the best thing in the winter. Like. I've got these uh, that I will do a review on relatively soon, but these are my, like, using all the time shorty gloves. Uh, I've had a short, other shorty gloves from my MRT before now, um, but these are what I'm using at the moment. And if I want something a bit more heavy duty, I've got these hand droids. But I do actually have another pair of gloves, which are probably in my bottom of my winter drawer, which is these big, soft, warm, windproof, dry... They're like skiing gloves. Now, they don't offer near the, the amount of protection that these would, particularly with impact. There's no hard areas on them. But if it's like minus four, minus five, I kind of want that warmth and the ability to use my hands over the protection at that point. But on the same note as that, know that MX, like soft gloves that are designed for MX riders, they're not going to do anything for you on the road. They're designed for putting your hand down into dirt, you know, and they're not really designed for protection. Uh, road gloves are designed with sliding areas and knuckle protection and wrist protection, depending on which type it is, and padding and stuff in the right places to help protect your hands on the road. Gloves are really, really important. Just imagine, like, living with a hand that's so badly damaged that it doesn't work properly. These are the things you do everything with. So, look after them the best you can. Well, there you go. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new here. If you're an old subscriber and you haven't got notifications turned on, could you please do that if you don't mind? If you don't want to, then don't. I don't care. It's fine. Well, I do care. Uh, but it would be interesting to see if more people had that turned on, if it fed you my videos more reliably. You know, YouTube 2021 and all that. Um, if you'd help, like to help support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And if you've got any ideas for things like this you'd like me to cover, check my playlist first, because I've done a lot of stuff. But, uh, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll consider doing it. I've been riding for a long time, and uh, I like being able to give on little bits of tidbits of information that I think are important and might leapfrog you through some mistakes. But then again, we've all made them, so, you know, don't worry too much. <laughs> Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.